Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe nominated Asian Development Bank President Haruhiko Kuroda to lead the nation's central bank, raising the prospect of further monetary stimulus this year. Joining me on the line is Chris Williamson, Chief Economist at Market. Hello, Chris. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe plans to spend $100 billion in 15 months on infrastructure to help revive his country's economy. Do you think this is a wise move? I think it's a sensible approach given the situation that Japan's in at the moment, and particularly as it forms part of a three-pronged approach from the government with the new economic policy. Now, this is, a, this is their three arrows uh, one of which is this uh, fiscal expansion, uh, but that's sitting alongside uh, much looser monetary policy, the new inflation target, as well as growth-focused reforms. Now, if the infrastructure spending was just sat on its own, there would be more questions about the wisdom of it. But as part of this broader policy, uh, I, th I think it's, uh, it's a sensible approach, and it's certainly one that the markets are, are, are generally seeing as, uh, as, as a, a good way forward for Japan to pull out of the deflationary spiral it's been in over the last 15-20 years. Japanese shares rose with the Nikkei 225 stock average capping the longest monthly winning streak since 2006 after Prime Minister Shinzo Abe nominated Asian Development Bank President Haruhiko Kuroda to lead the Bank of Japan. What do you make of this? Well this has largely been due to the announcement of the, the, the new uh, ec economic approach. Since October, the, uh, the, the yen has fallen around about a fifth against the dollar and the euro, and at the same time, the Nikkei has risen by um, just over a quarter. So what the, what, uh, the markets are seeing here is that the, uh, the, the approach the government's taking is not only going to stimulate the Japanese economy, but it, it, it's, it's very much geared towards driving down the value of the yen, which will, of course, help uh, Japanese exporters, Japan's very export-oriented economy. So the weakening of the yen is very beneficial to equities as well. So that's the main, the main driver behind this. And the yen slid for a third day as Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe nominated Asian Development Bank President Haruhiko Kuroda to be the next Bank of Japan governor, raising prospects of more monetary stimulus this year. What challenges will the winning leader face and can we expect Japan to inject further stimulus? Yeah, one of the central tenets of the, of, of the new policy and, and the appointment of the new governor is, is to uh, meet a, a new higher inflation target. This is now doubled to 2%, uh, which is all well and good, but the, the problem is just how do they get there? The policy board at the moment is forecasting still only 0.9% inflation in 2014, the fiscal year of 2014. So... Uh, given the amount of stimulus that's already in the Japanese economy, one wonders how they're going to achieve this, this uh, higher inflation target. So uh, there, there, there's some challenges there ahead, especially given the situation we've got at the moment. Uh, there's talk about buying, buying more bonds, and it, or, uh, uh, more government bonds, but many uh, are, are already questioning how effective that will be. There is the possibility of buying bonds of longer maturities. It's been flagged up that they'll move from three to five years as average maturities. But even so, those longer dated bonds still have interest rates of around 0 0.1, 0.2%. So buying more of those bonds isn't really going to drive down that interest rate further. Um, they could maybe buy corporate bonds, but there's political resistance to that and other policymakers' resistance and uh, other non-normal policy measures are, are also looking uh, very ineffective. One that we, we keep uh, seeing talked about is giving forward guidance on interest rates, certainly something the Fed's doing and other central banks are talking about. But in the case of Japan, interest rates have been around zero since the late 1990s, so giving forward guidance is pretty relevant in the case of Japan. So, you know, there, there are big question marks about how they will achieve this this two percent in, in inflation target, and it seems they, they they're going to have to take quite uh, drastic measures to achieve that beyond what they've got. And even those drastic measures are are 
perhaps going to cause them problems. Now, one of those is perhaps uh, buying foreign bonds to drive down the value of the yen. Now, as we all know at the moment, that's going to cause many international issues, especially in the, in the face of the, the talk of currency wars. So their options are, are very limited, and it's going to take some very clever policymaking to get inflation up to that 2% target. And what are your concerns for the Japanese economy now? Well, the, the concerns are that if, if policymakers are unable to deliver on their promises, then there's uh, the potential for a, a big setback, both in market sentiment towards Japan and most particularly amongst businesses in Japan. Now, there are signs of life at the moment. This morning, there were two releases of economic data relating to the manufacturing sector, which were, were upbeat. The first was the, the official industrial production data which showed industrial production rising for the second consecutive month and the second release was the manufacturing PMI which rose to a four-month high. Now that's just the manufacturing sector of course but it's a very important sector in, in Japan so there are signs that that sector is lifting out and last month in January perhaps even more encouragingly we saw the service sector PMI for Japan uh, in, in expansion territory, showing the strongest growth for a year. But even more so, the business expectations index about what companies are anticipating their activity level to be in the year ahead rose to the highest we'd seen since 2007. Now, that level of optimism is very encouraging and suggests that businesses are looking to expand in the face of this increased economic policy stimulus. So the hope is that the government won't fail to deliver on their promises and we see that confidence continue to build. Thanks for joining me Chris. That's all for now but stay tuned to Duke's Copy TV for the latest financial news and updates. Goodbye for now.